Okay, as we discussed in the previous session, uh, the fourth strategy or method for strengthening is using cold work uh, works and there are different methods to apply cold work and metal to make it stronger. What happens during the cold works are actually dislocations entangle to each other uh, when they want to move and this is what's happening during the cold work and uh, of course in this case this, um, the movement of this location because they're entangled um, to each other with each other is harder therefore that's why what why materials are becoming stronger due to cold work uh, this is uh, the dislocation structure in uh, titanium after cold work and you see how dislocations are uh, stuck to each other the density of a dislocation of course what's happening the other reason that uh, we see increase in the strength of the material during the cold work is the increase in the dislocation density the dislocation is density is the, uh, is described as the total dislocation length divided by unit length or unit sorry unit volume um, for a single crystal we have about uh, 10 to 3 uh, for deforming samples this density is increasing to 10 to 9 to 10 to 10 and the unit is limiter to the power of minus 2 and after heat treatment the, these dislocations the number of dislocations are decreasing and their average value is about 10 to 5 to 10 to 6 as we said increasing the number of dislocations make the movement of dislocation harder therefore we have increase in the yield stress um, so it will be expected that yield stress increases with uh, density dislocation as well when, when two dislocation uh, meet um, we have two scenarios for those uh, dislocations that they have the same field of strain as you can see compression compression tension tension uh, we will see a repulsion of course the oppose against uh, the applied movement and applied stress while if the strain field is in opposite direction and we have compression in, in one side and the compression uh, in the same side of the second dislocation then what happens these two are attracting each other and, and these half planes are actually meeting each other and then they make a simple uh, perfect plane and by this way the dislocation is actually annihilating uh, due to cold uh, work as we said uh, what we have uh, we see increase in the yield strength as you can see here in the values of yield strength we can see increase in the tensile strength as you see in uh, this low carbon steel um, when we are dealing with 0% cold work we have a smaller value of uh, tensile strength 4% has higher and 24% has more and when we compare the ductility the lower percent of cold work result in higher value of ductility okay now here we try to calculate what is uh, the change in the mechanical properties of copper after um, it's exposed to cold work we want to calculate what are the values of yield strength tensile strength and ductility after the cold work of uh, this uh, copper bar the initial diameter is 15.2 and after the cold work we have the secondary or the final um, diameter equal to 12.2 of course you see uh, decrease in the cross-sectional area uh, the percent of the cold work the change in the area divided by the initial area multiplied by 100 if we do the calculation uh, we see that percent of cold work is 30 point uh, sorry 35.6 percent uh, now the next step is to go to these uh, graphs which show uh, the change in the yield strength uh, tensile strength and ductility of copper 
uh, versus uh, the percent of cold work. These uh, graphs can be found in chapter 9, page uh, 270, figure 9.19. Uh, we have calculated the percent of cold works, 35.6, and the rest is going to be very easy. We just go uh, along the x axis from uh, 35.6, and the value that we, can, uh, we find on the curve is the equivalent value of yield stress. Um, which is here 300 tensile strength is 340 and cold work uh, the percent of ductility is 7% at the, the cold work of 35.6% and now the question is uh, that what if we want to uh, revert back some of these properties into the time to the time that uh, before uh, cold work so how we can do it the answer is uh, by performing uh, appropriate heat treatment which uh, sometimes termed as uh, annealing treatment uh, this reverting results from uh, two different processes uh, that occur at elevated temperatures the first thing is recovery and then recrystallization which is followed by grain growth. This heat treatment nullifies the cold work. As you can see in this curve, the tensile strength is decreasing due to the annealing process and the ductility is actually increasing. So it is going back uh, in the opposite direction of cold work. Uh, during the first stage um, recovery, we have reduction of dislocation density by annihilation. Um, the first scenario, which results uh, from diffusion, what we have, we have extra half plane of atoms uh, here and here, and then we have atoms uh, that diffuse to region, uh, um, the regions of tension. So what you see here, after these uh, atoms diffuse here, what we have, we have dislocation and annihilation, as you can see here and uh, there is a formation of a perfect uh, atomic plane. The second scenario, uh, first the uh, dislocation is blocked and can, can't move to the right, so what's happening, it climbs up. The gray atoms uh, live by vacancy diffusion to climb, and the climbed one go uh, to the right of this picture, can now move, and the new slippery and what happens at the end we have opposite uh, dislocations that they meet and annihilate um, in the second step we have new grains uh, that are formed uh, in the recrystallization these new grains have uh, low dislocation density and are small in size as you can see here uh, they consume and replace uh, the parent cold work grains. So you will see new grains that are uh, becoming or creating here in this grain and this uh, old uh, cold work grain. As the process of recrystallization continues, all cold work grains are eventually uh, replaced by the new grains as you can see here in this picture. Uh, the third step is uh, grain growth. Bear in mind that this, we are in the heat treatment process and the time is growing. As uh, the time grows, we have average grain size uh, increases. So some of these tiny ones meet each, uh, into each other and then they make um, a grain size that are average size, of course, is still smaller than the cold work one what happens here is small grains actually shrink and uh, ultimately disappear and large grains continue to grow and we finally end up with microstructure as uh, shown here this is happening after 15 minutes uh, the grains becoming smaller and smaller are in the very first seconds of the heat treatment the empirical relation between the change uh, of the size of the grains and elapsed time is uh, shown here 
d is the grain diameter at a certain time of t uh, d0 is the initial grain diameter the value of n is uh, typically about 2 k is uh, a coefficient sorry uh, the value of k is the coefficient dependent on, uh, which is dependent on material and uh, temperature and t is uh, the elapsed time um, here you see um, for an annealing time of one hour uh, the influence of annealing temperature on the tensile strength and uh, ductility of a brass alloy as uh, talked earlier the strength is decreasing as the process going from recovery to the grain growth and you also see the grain size as a function of annealing temperature schematically shown here uh, the grain structure shown in the during recovery recrystallization and grain growth uh, stages <coughs> here TR is uh, recrystallization uh, temperature and it is uh, the temperature at which recrystallization just reaches uh, completion in one hour uh, it is between 0.3 or 30 percent of melting point to almost 60 percent of melting uh, temperature <coughs> the recrystallization actually for a specific metal and alloy it uh, depends on the percent of cold work uh, the recrystallization temperature decreases with increasing the percent of uh, cold work which is obvious if we have uh, done more cold work we need to uh, I mean here increasing the percent uh, cold work enhances the rate of uh, recryst uh, recrystallization with the result that recrystallization temperature is lower so we expect to see decrease in TR with increase in the percent of cold work uh, also uh, the purity of metal TR decreases with increasing purity which means uh, the recrystallization process proceeds more rapidly in pure metals than in alloys uh, now uh, let's have a look at uh, this question here we want to uh, customize and explore the value of mechanical properties of a brass rod based on the, what what is desired we have the dimension for the uh, brass rod it's uh, the cross-sectional area is um, is actually is a circle and it remains circular uh, we perform cold work and uh, and what is desired is a uh, tensile strength of 380 megapascal, a ductility of at least 15%, and then we know that the final diameter uh, must be 7.5 nanometer. So the first step is <coughs> okay, we take this rod and perform cold work, change the diameter so that the cross sectional diameter is changing from 10 to 7.5. We find the percent of cold work and then from the table properties we find the strength and the ductility if it satisfies both conditions then we are good if it not if the value of a strength as you do the calculation you will see the tensile strength will be more than this one but the ductility is less than this so now what we need to do is uh, cold work and then annealing again and then another cold work so that we can satisfy both conditions uh, we can work it out in the class okay after doing the problem uh, <coughs> uh, bear in mind that there is <coughs> hot working beside the term cold working and uh, the plastic deformation of a metal above the recrystallization temperature is what we know as hot working uh, while the deformation or plastic deformation below uh, the recrystallization temperature is uh, what is termed as uh, cold work the other term is the uh, grain growth which is uh, following by uh, after the recrystallization of course we should have control on the grain size based on what is desired usually metals having a small grains uh, 
they have relative uh, stronger properties and they are tough and the metals uh, that have large grains they are able to deform easily so they are good uh, creep resistance well, that's all for this session